Arc Aberration, a map that is known for being very difficult to survive on. Not only because of the various threats lurking around, but also this guy. Our main objective this video will be to survive 100 days without dying. But with all the angry dinosaurs, raptors, and aliens gunning for us, that's not gonna be an easy thing to do. But I was gonna have to do this map at some point. So without any further delay, it's time for the pain to begin. And here we go, boys, our first day on Aberration. I had planned on doing a mini Explorer Note run, but that's gonna be a little difficult. Once I secured the second Explorer Note, I got to work taming this bulldog. With the help of these aquatic shrooms, then I farmed up some of the basic resources so I can make myself a bow and arrow, because a boy's gotta be able to eat somehow. Sorry, little guy, I need to hide. And to help make hunting easier, I made a bola. I swear to God, no, no! There was an earthquake oh. going on, so I took the opportunity to grab some crystal and make myself a spyglass. Then I made some narcotics and an iguanodon saddle, because there was a level 80 iguanodon, and you know I was gonna go tame it. Man, I'm dead. Once it was tamed up, I named her Terry, and got to work harvesting some narco berries, because I wanted to tame a stego, though I don't think it appreciated my attempt. You better stop! But after some convincing, I was able to knock it out. And once it was starved enough, I fed it some berries and it was mine. I named it Steggy and made it a saddle. And now that I feel safe enough to travel, I think it's time we find my base spot. Try me, bitch. Well, fine. All right, we can take them. We gotta conquer this land. Oh, come on. Night, night. Oh, yeah. <sighs> well, that could have gone a little better, but we did secure our base spot, and more importantly, our boy Terrence is still alive. But with all the damage Terrence had taken, I had to leave him by this strange plant to heal him up. Then I got to work building my base, and towards the end of the day, I farmed some metal. When I returned, I saw Dodic just chilling at my base, and because I was going to need some stones to help make a certain saddle, I made the decision to tame it. While the Dodic was taming, I did some farming, made more narcotics for that sweet XP, and unlocked the Ballista Turret. Once the Dodic finished taming, I gave it a saddle, and farmed an absolute chunky amount of stone. And during the night, I farmed some green gems. In the morning, I killed some scorpions for their chitin, and I saw Spino get killed by a... Otter? That Spino just got killed by an otter. So, once I got over that, I went to farm more wood, but while harvesting, I saw this boy. Oh, Ravagers. <gasps> and you know I'm gonna tame it. So I made a second crossbow, built structures for a trap, and went out to tame it. Once the trap was made, I lured the 135 into it, killed all the filthy low levels, and bullied it into submission. When it was ready, I killed the sheep, fed it some mutton, and boom, I got a Ravager now. And once I made its saddle, I used it to help me farm some wood, since Ravagers have reduced carry weight. But after a while, I was getting tired of farming wood, by hand. So I decided I wanted me a roll rat. The only problem is that they require honey to tame, but finding honey should be easy, right? There's got to be some honey around here. The mm -hmm. hell is this area? Okay, I know for a fact there's got to be some honey around here. Okay, this is just getting stupid. Does honey even exist on this map? Because at this point, I think I'm going a little insane. Where is the honey? <laughs> Where is it? And at the end of 
Day seven, I finally found some honey. Which, by the way, was at spawn this entire time. So now that I found the honey, the only thing I need to do is just sit here and collect enough for a decent roll rat. Once I had enough honey, I left to tame this high level roll rat. In the way you tame these boys is you place honey into the last slot of your inventory, wait for them to burrow, and throw honey at their feet. And after several feedings later, we got our ourselves a roll rat. Now all I have to do is get enough resources for its expensive saddle. So I farmed up some stone to make some menting paste, unlock some engrams, you know, just a few. Then I gathered up a thick amount of metal and began working on my base. While working on the base, I was able to make the roll rat saddle and by God, is this thing fun to use. And now that I no longer have to harvest wood by hand anymore, it's time to get some real base work done. We're almost done it. And on the morning of day 11, I finally finished my base. And let me just say, it looking schnazzy. So now that I'm done building my base, I can move on to my next goal, which is taming a high level male ravager. So I made the necessary amount of bolas and set out on the quest to find one. Okay, we're gonna choose a different way. Of course, a 135 female. Oh, great. Oh, 125. Oh, 125. Okay, this is it. This is exactly what I wanted. Art gods, thank you. Now that the hard part is done, it's time to tame this boy. And I had a genius way of trapping this ravager. I was going to use billboards, which turned out great. Well, time to tame this boy the old-fashioned way, which was so much fun. Once it was down, I left to find a sheep for its mutton, found the sheep, killed it, fed it the mutton, and now we got a breeding pair. Once we were back to the safety of our base, I got the ravagers breeding, made some gas, and a generator. And when it was done crafting, I got my first baby ravager and imprinted it. But my imprint settings were a little funky. After that, I claimed my second baby ravager and farmed some meat for them. In the morning, I found this high-level bulldog, and since mine was utter garbage, I tamed it. The next thing I wanted was some red gems so I can make a gas collector. So I found a roll rat and waited for it to give me some red gems. Oh, come on, give me some red gems when you resurface. All right, come on, give me some good red gems here. Give me some red gems. Give me some red gems. I shall run in a circle until you give me some red gems. All right, give me some red gems. You're gonna give me red gems. Well, that was a waste of time. To restore my faith in this game, I went to the blue zone to farm some metal and was finally able to get some red gems. When I returned to base, I made a gas collector and healed up Bob. Then I took the boys for a spin and it feels good to have an imprinted dino, but I wanted something stronger. So I made a large bear trap, trank arrows, and some stone gateways in hopes to tame a high level spino. Getting it in the trap was a little difficult, no. but once it was in, knocking it out was easy. While I was waiting, I unlocked the air conditioner engram, and when it was ready, I fed it some mutton. But I don't remember when I got it. The spino still needed a little more time, so I traveled around the green zone to farm some metal. When I returned, the spino finished taming, so I gave it a saddle and took it out on a test drive. We ended up farming a lot of organic polymer, so to keep it from spoiling, I wanted to make a fridge.
Damn it. Once I did have enough crystal though, I was able to make the fridge as well as an industrial grill. I also made stone pillars, foundations, and a catapult because I wanted to tame a crab. These boys are great for farming metal because of their ability to pick up small dinos, like an ankylo. But in order to tame them, you need to use a catapult. When knocking one out, make sure to not hit their feet because that doesn't deal any torpor. When the crab was knocked out, I had some time to kill, so I went to the blue zone to farm some blue gems. Gems. When I returned, I fed the crab spoiled meat to tame, and when it was done, I made its saddle and had some fun with it. Oh my god, I can jump with it. Oh, this is incredible. Oh, I love this crab. Yeah, this is the best thing ever. Though it's sadly not the best fighter. So I had to let it heal up. While it was healing, I went to find a female Spino for breeding. And when I found one, I made a trap and things were looking good. Until I realized how low on health it was. So I killed it. Then I remade the trap and found this girl. And uh, you guys know how this goes. Make traps, shoot trank arrows, and wait five hours. While waiting, I unlocked the hazard set and made some cryopods at a nearby supply drop. I only made five, but that's all I need for now. I then fed the Spino some prime meat, and while I was taming, I made another fridge to store more polymer and farm some stone with my dodic, which went great. <laughs> Oh god. Once I made sure the dodic didn't die, I brought the spino home and made some air conditioners. Then I got my spinos to do the thing and hatched my first baby spino. I named him Steward, and while he was raising, I went around and mindlessly killed everything. When we returned to base, Terence and I farmed some berries to make more narcotics and trank arrows. Stewart had fully grown up at this point, so with the necessary supplies, we set out to the blue zone to find an ankylo. Tracking down a good level ankylo was a little difficult, especially with all the basilisk running around, but we were rewarded with this level 125 ankylo. Trapping the ankylo and knocking it out was easy, but this is where things get real fun, because I have to wait 50 54 minutes for it to tame. Add in the fact that the blue zone is very aggressive, and I was in for a fun time. Oh no! Well... That was an experience. Thankfully, we were able to tame the Angelo and the Shinehorn, which I named Jerry. Stuart and I then went out to farm some hide, and in doing so, I unlocked the Industrial Forge. By nighttime, we had farmed up a lot of hide, and on the way back to base, we found a 145 female crab. And since my crab is a male, I had the ingenious plan of breeding the crabs. You'll see how that goes later. Once I remade everything for the trap, I got got it set up, and I think the game was trying to tell me something, because none of my shots were hitting. <laughs> well, I've... How the hell did I miss that? And whenever they did land, I ended up killing the crab. Yep. Ah, uh, that was a complete waste of time. To make sure I didn't lose my remaining sanity, I got Tony some levels and killed some tech dinos for electronics. Then I went back to the blue zone to tame another Shinehorn, because I somehow lost Jerry. When it tamed, I named it Shiny, uncryoed my Angelo, and did every ARC player's favorite thing, grinding. That went surprisingly well. Hello went so well, I went over to the small island to get some crystal. The next thing I wanted was some hazard gear so I can look for some megalos in the blue zone. So I went to my gas collector and grabbed some gas balls. And once the set was made, I set out to the blue zone. Having stewards should make looking for a megalo easier, but knowing Ark, you can never be too careful. After some searching, we were able to find a 120 megalo, and trapping this boy was 
pretty easy. Once knocked out, I made sure to secure the perimeter, and when it was ready, I sacrificed the sheep, killed another alpha crab, and fed it the mutton. Once tamed, I checked its stats, and they were absolute trash. So I left to find another, and a level 135 will do just fine. By now, you guys should know how this whole process goes. Make trap, knock out, kill sheep, and boom, another megalo. The stats on this one were a little better, but still not what I wanted. So I kept on searching for good megalos, only to find that there were no good levels to be found. So I went home. Once back at base, I named the megalos based on their health and melee stats. To prepare for future teaming, I made narcotics, spark powder, sniper bullets, and finally some trank darts. Now I can move on to my next goal, which was making an industrial forge. The only material I was missing was crystal, so after a quick resource run, I was able to make the chunk it boy. But now I have to restock on all my resources, because making an industrial forge is very expensive. Thankfully, Tony is an absolute machine, so restocking on metal wasn't an issue. I then made another set of hazard gear and crafted more cryopods, and with everything all set, I began the search to find some good megalo stats. What level are you? Ah, oh, come on. <gasps> nice. Let's go down. Uh. Oh, yeah. uh, that's pretty mid. Ah, uh, level five. That's what I like to see. 195. All right, girl, time to eat. Ah, damn. You're a bust. Hello there, Avis. Ugh. Oh! I think because of the way I was and it grabbed me, I think it glitched me into him. Oh, I'm free! Aha! If you have any good stats, I'll team you. If not, you're dead. Alright, ah, I'm not wasting my time with this. Okay, this is getting stupid. I have been looking for good megalo stats for five days now, and I've gotten nothing but trash. I mean, sure, I'm finding good levels, but none of them are coming out with any decent stats. Oh, would you look at that? Terrible health. At this point, I was ready to just give up on the search for a good health and melee stat. But as luck would have it, I found a max level megalo. Huh, watch it have like 120 melee. 250 melee. Oh my god, we did it. We finally found a good megalo stat. And it only took me six days to find. After I got over my shock, I tamed the 145. And to no surprise, it was garbage. I then sacrificed like my 10th sheep so far, fed the mud into the megalo, and we finally got the stats I was looking for. But now that I have both health and melee stats in one mail, the other megalos are no longer needed. Dead. Execute order 66. Once I was done reorganizing, I cooked up some of the remaining mutton and crafted myself a pump action shotgun. The next thing I wanted to do was start my boss line, so I got the two megalos breeding to combine all the best stats into a male and female. Once I got my first egg, I placed it by the air conditioner to hatch, and we got twins. Unfortunately, they had the bad melee, so I fed them to my crab. Then I got another egg, hatched it, and this boy had the stats we were looking for. I named him Perfect Male for breeding purposes, hatched another Megalo egg, and was disappointed once again. This is fine, though, because our next egg is gonna be the- Uh, nope, nope, that's a bust too. To get over my crippling disappointment, I made some Ravager saddles for a certain something and hatched another Megalo egg. Hello there. Oh, please be a female. Yes. Well, 
Wasn't that a fun experience? Now that we have our perfect male and female, I can move on to my next goal, which was to do my first cave. The only thing I knew about this cave going in was that it had raptors. So I'm bringing the boys with me for some extra backup. Okay. Uh, where are I? Well, that's not a good sign that there's a max level. Oh, my palms are so sweaty. <laughs> oh! Ah, oh, finally. All right, there's nothing there. Oh, no, 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 no. I am not getting off and going to grab that artifact while an earthquake is happening. Nope. Oh, okay. <sighs> now that was stressful. Not because the cave was like super difficult or anything, but because of you. None of that matters now though, because I am never going back there. Once I got back to base, I immediately put the artifact away and farmed some berries to calm myself down. When I was done farming, I began making the preparations for the Rock Drake Trench. One of the things I was going to need was climbing picks, so in the early morning of day 37, I got to work crafting them. They weren't that expensive to make so I was able to make a good bit of them and when they finished crafting I wanted to test them out uh, whoa. oh what the okay this is so stupid so I might need to rethink that whole climb and pick strategy zip lines could be another option so I got to work crafting a bunch of them and killed some crabs in my watering hole then I took Tona and the Anklo out to farm more metal and blue gems and let's just say we got a lot of metal when we got back to base the megalos were still growing up so to pass the time I went to the portal area to farm crystal and electronics on the morning of day 39 I wanted to take a break from all the grinding and have some fun. So I messed around with the glider suit. I don't know when I crafted it, but honestly, they are really easy to make and also extremely fun. Oh, glider suits are so much fun. Okay, the temptation is holding is making me go crazy. Throwing flashbang. Well, that was anticlimactic. The Megalos finally finished growing up, so I got those two lovebirds going and formed some flint to make more spark powder. When I was done, I grabbed the Megalo egg, hatched it, and the level came out really funky. Both parents are level 228, so I have no idea what's happening. I then named the Megalo Jimbo, farmed some stone, and hatched another Megalo egg. She ended up having a melee mutation, so I named her 1M, imprinted Jimbo, and hatched hatched another megalo egg. Then I renamed the mutated baby Sam and hatched another egg. Yeah, I might need to rework some of my settings. I then gave Jimbo his second imprint, and now that I was the father of several baby megalos, I had to stay around the base to imprint them. Let's put you down here, put you down there. Ooh, what level are you? 230? Four of them for the trench should be enough. If you are a male, Christy, you're gonna be repurposed. <gasps> that actually didn't take as long as I thought it would. And more importantly, now that we have our new perfect male and female, we can eliminate the filthy inferiors. 
So, now that that's taken care of, the only thing left to do now is just wait for the Trench Megalos to grow up. During this time, I did some reorganizing around my base and did some big metal runs with my boy, Tony. I mean, just look at all this metal. And if you're wondering why I need so much metal, oh, you'll understand soon. The Trench Megalos were finally finished growing up, so I gave Sam and Jimbo their saddles and went out on a leveling spree. And who oh, does it feel good to be on an imprint in Megalo? Once Sam got enough levels, I left her to heal by the sus plant. Then I took Jimbo out and got him some levels. Ah, uh, there's no greater feeling like mindlessly killing everything. When we got back to base, there was a few last minute preparations I needed to make. I left Jimbo to heal with Sam, grabbed an extra set of hazard gear, zip lines, and climbing picks, made sure to grab my light pet, and we were ready. All this preparation and stress for one rock drake egg. And that's assuming I'm even able to make it past the Perlovias, Reaper Queen, Spinos, Radiation. And I think you get the point by now. There is no limit to the amount of ways this journey can go wrong, as the rock drake trench is no joke, and one wrong move could be my last. Oh, that's a Perlovia. The hell are you doing back there, bud? Did you get stuck? Okay, you're low on stamina, so Sam, back to you. Ah! Okay, we're getting close now. Oh, I see a rock, Drake Egg. Alright, let's see if that gets him up here. Oh! 150! Okay. Alright. My first rock drake egg. Oh, there they are. Oh, something's flying in. Oh, there we go. Here's the mosh pit! Alright, boys, go to town! God, you guys are machines. Alright, let's get out of here. So, that was... Pretty easy. A little too easy, actually. What kind of game is this? Ark? You okay? All jokes aside, though, the reason why it looks so easy was because I did my research and prepared myself well. And also, my Megalos being literal Terminators helps out, too. When I finally got back to base, I did some reorganizing and then made the motherload of air conditioners. But when I put the Rock Drake egg down the hatch, it was too hot. Maybe if I turn off my forge. Nope. Still too hot. That's fine, though. I'll just make a few more ACs and we should be good. How? Okay, let's try this one more time. Oh, thank God. Okay, no more air conditioners. <laughs> well, wasn't that a fun experience? Now that I had enough AC to hatch this chunky boy, the next step was to go to the blue zone to farm some nameless venom. The way you do this is by turning off your light pet in the blue zone and just wait for them to spawn in. Once I was satisfied with the amount of nameless venom I collected, I returned to base to let the rot drake egg start hatching. I was going to have to wait 10 minutes for the egg to hatch, so to pass the time, me and my boy Terry farm some narco berries. When I returned, the rock drake finally hatched, and since it was a female, I named her Jezebel. As she was growing up, I went to work making more shotgun shells for my boomstick, and by the time it was done crafting, I gave Jezebel her first imprint. She ended up getting 33% per imprint, so it took me no time at all to get her to 100% imprint. Since I no longer have to babysit Jezebel, I took Tony out for our usual metal run, because he can never have too much metal. Back at base, I continued to hatch and raise up Megalos, and whenever I wasn't, I was at spawn trying to find a Alpha Basilisk. And ooh, am I gonna have beef with these boys. As you can probably guess, I wasn't able to find one, so I just went home and continued to raise more Megalos.
To give myself a break from raising dinos, I wanted to make an irrigation system. And yes, that does sound like a random thing to do, but if I want to make any medical brews in the future, I'm gonna need me a water system. Once I was done laying down the water pipes, I continued to raise more megalos and took Reggie out to get him some levels. I also tried to find an alpha basilisk at Fertile Lake, but of course I didn't find one. I continued to raise more megalos back at base, and in my free time, I would go over to the portal area and kill everything in sight, all to try to find one stupid red snake. Some of you might be getting a little tired of me constantly looking for alpha basilisks, but whoo, you haven't seen anything yet. I was only able to find two regular basilisks at Portal, so I returned to base and put some of my megalos in the cryopods. Then I took Bob out and explored Fertile Lake. Where's everyone running out? Oh! There's these cool vines that only Ravagers can climb on, and when we got to the top, we found a hidden explorer note. We also found another basilisk, but it was a trash level, so I killed it. Back at base, I grabbed my climbing picks, hazard gear, and rock drake saddle, because it was time to go out on a test drive. With the rock drake, you can fly around aberration at insane speeds, climb up walls, and are overall absolute units. I leveled up Jezebel by killing some spinos, and scouted out Portal for an alpha basilisk. We weren't able to find any alpha snakes, so Jezebel and I returned to the trench to get some more rock drake eggs. The first egg was actual butt, followed by garbage and more garbage. Then I had to take a break to clean out the trench of any witnesses, and then we found the mother load. There was a level 175 rock drake egg, trash, and a level 185 egg. At this point, I was feeling pretty good about the eggs I had, so I went back home. Once back, I put the eggs in the fridge for later, did a little meat run to restock my food, and healed up Jezebel. Nameless Venom is some I was going to need, so I just went back to the blue zone and restocked on some venom. When I had enough, I returned to base and made another fridge. Since the eggs were still hatching, I checked for an alpha basilisk over at Fertile Lake, but of course I didn't find anything. Back at base, my new rock drakes finished hatching, and the colors were a little interesting. The level 185 drake had the better stats of the two, so I named the good one Streak and deleted the other one. Then I went to the blue zone to see if there was any alpha snakes, but as usual, there was nothing. At base, I gave Streak his last imprint, and let's just say his stats are pretty good. And now that I don't have to worry about imprinting Streak anymore, I had some time to do another cave. The entrance to this cave can be a little tricky to find, but after some searching around, I was able to find it. The cave itself was honestly really easy with a rock drake, and the only real threat in this cave is the purple liquid liquid of death. The cave layout did confuse me for a bit, so after some fun searching, I found the correct path and collected the artifact. Thankfully, I had no trouble finding the exit, and back at base, I made the industrial cooker. With this, I was finally able to make some med brews, then I spent some time around base raising the young ones and looking for an alpha basilisk. But I stopped my search when it became nighttime, because I wanted to check out the surface. During the day, you can't go Go up there unless you want to become a human corn dog, and as you can imagine, the surface isn't exactly the safest place to be, but the loot drops make it worth it. Now that is what I call some good loot. Some of the stuff I probably won't use, but it's still good. I'll get a second chance to get some better loot when it becomes nighttime again. So for the rest of the day, I tended to the young ones, and when it became nighttime, I went out for a second drop run. Things started off pretty standard until a blue drop touched down. Um. After I was done with my second surface session, I returned to base and just look at all them goodies. I still had one more day of it being 90% night, so I just hung around at the surface entrance until it was nighttime. But this time, I wasn't looking for any supply drops. What I was looking for was a Alpha Reaper. They can only spawn on the surface, so the best time to look for them is when it's night. Ow? 
I wasn't having any luck so far trying to find one with my Megalos, so I tried to find one with my Rock Drake. That also didn't work, so I just went home. At base, I continued to raise more Megalos and did a little meat run because these boys eat a lot. Billy and Sam still needed to heal after our recent surface adventure, so to pass the time, I went out and did my favorite activity, which is looking for a Alpha Basilisk. <laughs> no! Monkey! Oh, Monkey's fighting back! Oh, shit! Oh, Basilisk! How much of a walk do you need to go on? <laughs> Give me an alpha basilisk game. Huh, you know, I'm starting to think I'm not gonna find this alpha basilisk. But on the bright side, my boy Streak is now fully grown up. So I gave him a saddle, put some metal into my industrial forge, and took him out for spin. For the alpha Rockwell fight, I'm going to be using Streak to get around, so I mainly focused on giving him as much health as possible. Once Streak had enough levels in the health, I went back to doing my favorite activity, looking for basilisks. Streak and I scouted the entire green zone and couldn't find any, so we went to the blue zone and found this boy. Oh, one for five! Oh my god, I could tame that. Oh my god, that's beautiful. Now, normally, this would be the part where I start making a trap, but the process of taming a basilisk is a little different. In order to tame a basilisk, you need to have them eat rock drake eggs while awake. So I had to go back to base to grab my spare rock drake eggs. But before I did that, I had to deal with an armada of crabs and their leader. Once I was done with that, I went back to base, grabbed my spare eggs, and went back to the rock drake trench because i didn't have enough eggs once i got to the trench i began securing the perimeter holy <laughs> and grabbed the eggs when i got back to the blue zone i first had to find the basilisk okay where is the uh 145 and when i did i began getting things set up the best way to tame a basilisk is to place your light pet on the ground put a metal foundation on top of it and throw down your rock drake eggs after that it's just a matter of getting the snake's attention and waiting Once the basilisk was tamed, I returned to base to give it a saddle, and in terms of strength, it's not bad. I had my megalos breeding while I was out with the basilisk, so I grabbed their eggs and got to work raising more young ones. Then I went on another metal run in the blue zone, but while I was doing it, I made a small error. Thankfully, I had med brews because that could have been the end of me. Once I was done gathering metal, I carefully returned to base, all thanks to Tony. And when I returned, I got the metal smelting and made some scuba gear. Some of you might be wondering why I would need scuba gear in an underground map, and the answer is because I'm doing another cave. But this time, it's underwater. What the hell is going on here? Okay, well, I'm gonna jump down. Uh! Why would they put metal down there? Like, who's gonna come out of their way and go, Ah, oh, yes! Let me go in this cave for metal. I'm gonna take this way. I'm gonna see where this leads. Oh, let me to danger. Oh my god, you have more health than my basilisk. Oh, you're a 150. Hey. Okay.
Wait, am I glitched? Okay. Look at this dude. Oh! How did we do that? How did I do? <laughs> okay. Oh, wait a minute. I can just do this. And bam. Hello there, Mr. Crab. Oh, this cave is stressful. If I can just lead those seekers here, I'll be happy. Oh, Sam's gonna take forever to wake up, man. Yeah, you guys are attracted to the light, right? Come on in. Okay. Oh, we got the artifact. Okay, good, 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 good. Oh, uh, we got the artifact. That was something. Wasn't as bad as it could have been since my boy Streak is a literal tank, but we did suffer one casualty. Sam. She's not dead, but I am not staying down here and waiting for her to wake up. Not when I still have to hunt down and collect the remaining Alpha Rockwell tributes. Looking at you, Alpha Basilisk. And as much as she has helped me out so far, I am not doing this cave a second time to retrieve her. So reluctantly, I had to leave Sam behind. To be fair, there is nothing in this cave that can kill her, so we good. When I resurfaced, it was day 67, so I returned to base to store the artifact and made some some of the cool gear I got from the surface. If you're wondering why I didn't show myself making the gear, it's because I forgot to record. Huh, <sighs> you would think after all this time, I would make sure to remember that I'm recording, but nope. Anyways, I returned to Portal and did my usual routine of trying to get an Alpha Basilisk to spawn. As usual, it didn't work, so I went to the surface instead to try to find an Alpha Reaper. I wasn't having any luck trying to find one, so I just grabbed some random surface drops, which were actual trash. So I tried going to a different surface area, again, to see if I could find an Alpha Reaper. But just like before, I didn't find one. On the morning of day 69, I returned to the dreaded radiation zone in search of a Alpha Basilisk. But what I found was the exact opposite of that, because I ran into a Reaper Queen. These sci-fi movie villains not only have an insane amount of health, but if you don't have a light pet on, they take reduced damage. Add in the fact that my boy Streak doesn't deal a lot of damage, and I was forced to leave it alone. I still can continued searching for a Alpha Basilisk in the red zone, but when I couldn't find one there, I continued my search in the blue zone. And just like my search in the red zone, I didn't find one. So I just cut my losses and went up to the surface to try to find a Alpha Reaper. I did have to stop searching for the Alpha Reaper since it was almost morning, but I did end up getting this good long neck rifle, so at least I got something. At base I realized I was running low on food, so I grabbed my Basilisk and went out on a little meat run. Once I was done restocking the food supply, I crafted some Megalo saddles and hatched more baby Megalos for some easy XP. Then I took one of my Megalos out to get him some levels by killing the local Spino population. Once I was done leveling the Megalo, I spent some time around base raising more babies, and when it became nighttime, I went back out to the surface. I was mainly looking for a Alpha Reaper, but that didn't stop me from checking out some of the loot drops. Oh, that's a nice chest plate. I didn't find any Alpha Reapers as usual, but as a constellation prize, I got these real nice boots, and that was good enough for me to head back home. At base, I checked in on some of my Megalos, and then I took Terra out to get her some levels. 
While I was leveling, I was making sure to keep an eye out for a Alpha Basilisk, but just like all the other times, I didn't find one. <sighs> At this point, I honestly believe my world is glitched, because how have I not found one Alpha Basilisk? I have killed so many regular Basilisks that I'm probably on some sort of watch list. So it's either my game is glitched, or Ark hates me that much. I even searched the entire Blue Zone again, but still have not found one Alpha Basilisk. And I know they exist, because I have seen videos where people have two of them spawned in at the same time. But I guess it's just my luck. At base, I wanted to make myself useful, so I took out another Megalo and got it some levels. Then I did some restocking on my food supply, and went back to Fertile Lake to continue the search once again. Watch out, watch out, watch out! The search ended up taking me to the red zone, and this gave me an idea. One of the requirements to fight Alpha Rockwell is Reaper Glands, so me and the boys went out to kill any Reaper Queen we could find. And that we did. Very well. A little too well, actually, since now I have more Reaper Glands than I need. That actually works out, though, because I may or may not want my own Reaper Queen. Day 76, I was out at Fertile Lake looking for a Alpha Basilisk for like the seventh time so far. As per usual, I didn't find any, so I went back to base to raise more Megalos for the boss fight. At this point, I only needed a few more Megalos to complete the boss army, so while I had some time, I went out and did my favorite thing, which is looking for alphas. I know this is getting a little annoying seeing me do the same things over and over again, but this is the way I have to do it. So for like the fifth time so far, I went to the surface to look for a Alpha Reaper. My main plan was to kill as many surface Reapers as I could to hopefully get an Alpha Reaper to spawn in. But at this point, we all know how my plans usually turn out. What's up? Oh my gosh, I actually found it. I never thought I would see the day. An Alpha Reaper. And it's a low level, meaning my Megalos can tear right through it. Ark, thank you. Now with the Alpha Reaper dead, there is only one more Alpha I need to track down in order to fight Alpha Rockwell, and it's you. Unfortunately, I couldn't stay and farm supply drops since it was almost morning, so I returned to base. The Megalos I took to the surface still needed to heal, so I used this time to get some of my other boss dinos some levels. When we were done leveling, Terence and I farmed some berries to make more med brews, and went back to the surface to farm more loot drops. When it was nearly day, I returned home, and I would say that this loot run was pretty successful. However, I still needed a better shotgun and rock drake saddle for the boss fight, so for the rest of the day, I scouted for an alpha basilisk, and when it was night, I went back to the surface. I like how this day is starting. Oh, I like that a lot. Once I was satisfied with the loot, I returned to base and just look at all them goodies. Some of the blueprints, like the Ascended Rock Drake Saddles, might be just a, a little too expensive for me. However, the Journeyman one will do just fine. But before I crafted it, I wanted to do another metal run because some of the stuff I'm going to be crafting requires a lot of metal. I did have to go deeper into the blue zone to farm metal, but overall, things were going pretty good. And that is where the problem is, because things have been going a little too well. Ark isn't supposed to be an easy game, and it agreed with me because just as I was about to head back to base, this happens. This is not good. Ah! 
Why? Why did that have to happen? I just lost my only way to get metal to some stupid rock drake. Yes, I probably could have handled that situation better and not yeeted my ankle, but it was late at night and I was panicking. Doesn't matter now though, because now I need to find a replacement Ankylo. There wasn't any good levels around, shocker. So I had to settle for this level 65, brought it back to base, and knocked it out. Then I went back to the blue zone to check again for a better Ankylo, and a level 120 will do just fine. Sorry, level 65 Ankylo, you've been replaced. <laughs> Once I had the level 120 knocked out, I got to raising more megalos for the boss fight, crafted some stone stairs and fences, because it was time to get myself a reaper. Unlike other endgame dinos, reapers can be brought into the boss fight, so having one be an overpowered bodyguard in the arena would not be a bad idea. The first reaper I found was a level 85, not the worst, but I was looking for something a little better. I did, however, get bored of constantly searching, so I decided I decided to just build my trap and see if there is any good level reapers in the area. I did have to remake some structures though since I crafted the wrong items, but when it was made I scouted around for some good reapers. The first one I found was actual butt, so I just lured it off the cliff and then I found a level 115. Once I had it in the trap I began lowering its HP because in order to get a reaper you have to lower their HP to 10% and when that happens they grab you with their tail and Put a baby in you. Or at least that's how it's supposed to go, but this Reaper's being difficult. I unfortunately had to go back to base to repair my hazard gear, and when I got back to the trap, the reaper was gone. So I relocated the trap and lured over another reaper. Now, wasn't that a fun time? But it was worth it because I now have my own Reaper baby. Oh, and if you're wondering why you didn't see any of that, it's because I forgot to record it. Aren't I such a professional? At base, I had to re-knock out the Ankylo since it woke up. Then I did some reorganizing, fed the Ankylo some berries, and got my replacement Ankylo. I was in need of some crystals, so I took out my new Ankylo to farm some up, and when the baby Baby had 10 minutes till hatch, I went out with my rock drake to get it some levels. Okay, I got the extra 75 levels. You see, the reaper is gonna birth out of me right here, but I'm gonna be on top of this so it can't hit me. And then I'm gonna lure it in there and shut the door. It's a genius plan. They're gonna stay in that claw until you learn how to act like a civilized human being. That was an experience. Now that my Reaper wasn't trying to kill me, I was able to name him Rambo, went to the red zone to farm some red gems, and made the Rock Drake saddle. At this point, I was raising a lot of dinos, so I had to go out on another meat run to make sure I didn't run out of food. While the food was cooking, I went back to the blue zone to farm some metal with my new Ankylo. Since I didn't get attacked by a Rock Drake this time around, I was able to make it home with my metal, and to prepare for the boss fight, I made more shotgun ammo. Speaking of boss fights, I needed a better shotgun, so I went to the surface to do some drop hunting. I got some good flak armor, but my main prize was from this yellow drop. Oh! Oh my god, no way. Yeah, I think I found my shotgun for the boss fight. Said shotgun, though, requires a lot of resources, so I returned to base to start crafting some cementing paste. While crafting, I got my megalos some levels by executing the young ones, and when it became night again, I went back to the surface to farm more loot drops. Now, it's at this point where I need to tell you guys something. As you are aware, my luck with alpha basilisks has been less than ideal, so in order not to fail this challenge, Challenge, I downloaded the Dino Tracker mod, which makes it easier to hunt down certain alphas. Some of you might be mad at me, but at this point I have killed over 40 regular basilisks, and I am not failing this challenge due to terrible RNG. And besides, I still have to kill the thing, so it's not too cheaty.
please don't judge me. At base, I farmed some stone with my dodic and went out on my megalode to harvest the mother load of all chitin. When we returned, I crafted a thick amount of cementing paste and finally crafted my boom stick. On day 90, Rambo had finished growing up, so to get a better idea of his strengths, I took him out to get some levels. For the Alpha Rockwell fight, I wouldn't be riding Rambo, and since Reapers take reduced damage, his main job is just to be an overpowered tank. Damn, boy. Damn, boy, he thick! Now that Rambo was decently leveled, there was only a few more things I needed to do in order to be ready to fight Alpha Rockwell. Some of that was making more shotgun ammo, but the main things were getting all my Megalos leveled up, and of course, trying to find a Alpha Basilisk. So enjoy this time lapse. Hello there. Well, at least with the creature finder, I now expect the disappointment. Dodo! No! So majestic. Towards the end of day 92, I decided to finally be a man, and I uninstalled the Dino Tracker mod, because I have pride, and I will not let this game beat me. You hear me, Ark? You won't beat me. So after restocking on med brews and making more shotgun ammo, I set out to once again search for a Alpha Basilisk. All right, I don't see anything here. Uh, I'm doing reduced damage. Oh my gosh, I, I did it. I finally did it. I found a Alpha Basilisk. And it only took me 60 days to find. Huh, I am so glad that I no longer have to search for this overcooked noodle anymore. Nameless Venom was the last tribute I needed to collect, but at this point, that is not an issue at all. At base, I did a head count of all the boss tributes, and since I no longer needed to hunt down alphas anymore, I can spend the rest of the remaining days getting ready to fight Alpha Rockwell. Hey. All right, uh, next Megalo up to me. Oh, go off, Ravager! Alright, we are leveling up, boys. Ah! Stay go! I'll save you! Oh, oh, it's a- oh, it's a brawl! Uh, something doesn't seem right right now. Oh, by the way, I, uh, forgot to show you guys me getting an Ascendant Rock Drake saddle on day 89. So, my bad. And on day 99, I began the final preparations for the Alpha Rockwell fight. One of those was gathering up as much fiber as I could, so I could craft some Ascendant Megalo saddles. Then I did a quick check of all my gear, crafted any missing pieces, and here we go. It's all or nothing for this boss fight. My journey on Aberration was, all in all, not bad. Besides a few annoyances, I had a good time on this map. 
Bud Alpha Rockwell is the true test to see if I can beat Aberration. And no more safety, no more planning, and no more preparation. And I'm not gonna lie, I am a little nervous. Every moment during this run could have been my last. And now I'm about to face my hardest challenge yet. But I had 100 days to prepare for this moment. So how about we get this show on the road? Wait. Oh my god! Yeah, so, that's a problem. I don't know how I'm not level 100 considering all the Spinos I've killed, but I can't do the Alpha Rockwell fight unless I'm level 100. And considering the amount of XP needed to get to level 100, I'm in a little trouble. Thankfully though, I had a plan. I was going to use the powers of the internet to find some explorer notes, and then I was going to hunt down all the Reaper Queens. Now, that may may sound tedious, but with streaking my megalos, it was easy. Okay, now we're ready to fight Alpha Rockwell. But before I did that, I went back to base to say goodbye to my boy, Terrence. I'm gonna miss you, man. Uh, well, this is it. No more setbacks, no more interruptions. This is it. Everything I said before about me being nervous is still true, because even though I had an extra five days to think about everything, this boss fight feels... Daunting. I prepared as much as I could, and I think I know what I'm doing, but do I really know what I'm doing? Alright, we're gonna be working left side. Oh, balls! Ah, oh, really? Because it looks like I just did. Look at all those nameless. Look at all the monkeys. Okay, how did that work out for me? Alright, we're fine. Go not panic. Oh no, 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 no. so stressful at the end how many are alive oh my gosh they're all dead except rambo and patron oh 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 oh, oh. holy shit oh ho oh, 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 oh.
Ah, ha, ha, ha. Oh, extinction. That isn't going to be fun at all. Well, that's the end of the video, boys. If you're someone who has made it this far into the video, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Make sure you leave a like and comment down below, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care.